Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Tycle. Look, I know I'm guilty of hyping up my videos and my drills because I am genuinely excited about getting things across and hopefully inspiring and, and creating more passion in the Tycle community. But this week's drill I'm really, really excited about, the binary beat. You have dexterity, dynamics, diddles, and more. You have timing and improv all in one drill. On top of that, you don't need any equipment, but you can use some if you want. And on top of that, it's a lot of fun. What else could you ask for in a single drill? So come with me and I will teach you the binary beat. The beat part of the binary beat comes from the fact that you're playing a straight beat. The binary part comes from choosing either the right or the left, one or zero, two choices, binary beat. We're gonna start by laying down the foundation for everything else that gets put on top of it. You have your straight beat, your eight count straight beat. You're gonna play all of the notes with your strongest hand. For me, it's my right, probably the same for you, but I know there's a few lefties out there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. That's the foundation. The most important thing here is to know where that one is at all times. You can consider this level zero. It's not really a lesson, it's just where we're starting. And now, level one. You have your eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On occasion, as you feel like it, you're gonna substitute your weaker hand, my left hand, for one of the notes on the right hand. Doesn't matter where it is, doesn't matter how often, but for now, just lightly sprinkle it in sometimes. It might look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated. I recommend staying at level one for a little while, getting comfortable with it. And by all means, try it a little faster. In level one, we had our eight count and we were keeping track of the one. Now we have eight, 16, 24, 32, any number you want, as long as it's divisible by eight. And it can also be any sequence you want. It could be several eights in a row, followed by a 32. Maybe you don't do a lot of eights, you pop them in every now and then. Doesn't really matter. This part's up to you. Maybe to the outsider, it may not sound like a 16, but in your head, if you feel it's a 16 or something larger, that's what counts. You're just trying to vary the length. Let me do a couple of quick demos. One at a slower tempo, one at a faster tempo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Level three is something you might have already been doing because I didn't say not to. Instead of just playing one note at a time with your other hand, feel free to play more than one note at a time. So you can do two, three, seven, it doesn't matter. Overall, you want more notes played on your stronger hand, but you don't have to count, you don't have to worry about percentages. It should just feel like most of the notes are on your strong hand. Again, I'll do a couple of demos, one slower, one faster, just to give you a taste. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
Level four introduces dynamics so that all your notes don't have to be the same level of volume. And in fact, just like level three, this might be something you are already doing. Adding dynamics on top of everything else we've been doing might feel a little overwhelming. Too many balls to juggle, too many plates to spin. That's okay. So doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that is going to be way more effective than trying to do a lot of everything and stumbling and getting frustrated. Slow it down, light sprinkles of what you want to do. That in the long run will be way more effective and more fun. There's something that's kind of fun at this level. You can let go of the one. If you can keep track of the eight or 16 or 24 or whatever, that's great, but that's not as important at this point. In level one and two, you really wanted to keep that, that feeling of a, a sequence because it was really good to have as a framework. Now we're looking at concepts that are more important, that are more deep, if you will, and adhering to the one can hold you back. So this is one of those occasions where if you lose the one, it will come back eventually. It might not be the original one. You've got a one in eight chance of that happening. At this point, that's not the priority. The priority is just starting to explore and making this feel natural and fun. And finally, level five. Except level five really isn't a level. It's freedom. It's permission. Think of it this way. I've helped you create a square. I've helped you pick out the crayons and the colors you like. I've shown you how to color inside the box and how to leave some space if you want. And now you can color outside. If you want, you can draw a line that goes away or add some extra little fuzz here or some circles over here. But if you're just scribbling across the whole thing like it doesn't exist, that's a little bit messy. So there's your structure. And now you can play within and without it. I'm going to do one last demo. I'm going to start slow and I'm going to ramp up in speed. This is something you can do. You don't have to. And if you have a metronome, you're probably stuck at a certain tempo, which is totally fine. You'll see what I mean, or I should say here, while listening to what I play. It'll start to become apparent what I mean by coloring outside the line. And finally, I want to talk about how to apply the lessons learned in the binary beat to a solo. 
because any drill is fun up until a point, but if you can't apply it or you don't know how to apply it outside of the drill, it's kind of limited. It's very unlikely you would do a binary beat style of solo. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can see how it's a little limited. You're kind of stuck playing just the straight beat. A lot of your notes stay here. You're not really able to move the hands away. Even with the idea of coloring outside the lines, the binary beat can restrict the solo, and you don't want anything restricting your solos. Instead, use the feeling of the binary beat and all of the things it taught you. The spacing between the notes to keep them even, accents on different hands, multiple notes on one hand. There's a lot in there. So instead of playing a binary beat as a solo, use the ideas behind it. I know I have a lot of videos on my channel and I have a lot of drills and I wish everyone would do all of my drills, but not everyone has the inclination or the time to do a lot. So if you find yourself with a little bit of time, try this drill. Just, just try a little bit. Remember, you don't need any equipment. You can do it on your desk. You can do it on your lap. You can do it on your cat. Maybe not on your cat. I just think this drill is going to prove fun for everyone who tries it. And I would love to hear the results. If you found something you liked or you didn't, that you wanted more of, that you struggled with, let me know. I love your feedback. I respond to it. Those who have written me know that I reply and I take all of your comments and suggestions to heart. And if you find this drill useful or you find my antics entertaining, whatever the case, let me know with a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, the button's just down there. And until next time, keep on practicing and be well. <laughs>